Welcome to the Integrated Advisory Series, where we talk about the evolution of wealth management and how a client's most trusted advisor, their accountant, will lead this evolution. I'm your host, David Judy, and I'm joined by my co-host, partner, and good friend, Tim Copeland. Welcome back to our Integrated Advisory Series. Um, we ended the last episode talking a little bit about our investment model. And what I'd like to do in this episode is talk specifically, not only about how we invest, and I'll, I'll elaborate a little bit on that and what that philosophy is, but how our investment philosophy really syncs with accountants, the accounting community, and what's most important to them. So do you want to start and speak to that just a little bit? Yeah, happy to. Um, I, I think, you know, one thing about the accounting community is we're, we're pretty conservative by nature. And I think the last thing that we want to be involved in is a situation where, uh, you know, we're perceived as giving advice and clients' assets go from, you know, something to zero. Uh, that always is a challenge and a mindset that when we're talking to new firms or we're educating them on this, it always comes up. Mm -hmm. um, what happens if we start to integrate wealth management and investing and things don't go well? Right. Okay. And so I think um, there's some education and you'll talk about that in a moment, David, on how to invest differently today to avoid all of that noise um, or at least mitigate it. And I think, so you start with a bit of that accounting, conservative nature, um, but then you look at who they serve. And I think the firms that we're working with and will continue to work with as we grow are, you know, I would suggest 90% of their clients are business owners, they're entrepreneurs. Okay, these are mid-sized to small accounting firms. They're not the big, big four. Sure. Um, and so they're dealing in that private space. And when you look at those clients and their profile, the issue that you have is that they, they didn't create their wealth based on having a great investment guy. They didn't make it all a mutual fund? So <laughs> no. I mean, come on. No, they, you know, <laughs> they, they, they took calculated risk with their unique abilities. Yeah. Um, they, they were entrepreneurial. Um, they're comfort, comfortable with risk, but in their area of expertise. And I think what happens is, is as they grow their businesses and get to a stage where they have more money that they're not going to put back into their business, it's a, it's a challenge because they're going to have to start trusting other professionals to help them with that, call it a nest egg. Right. And so in, in many cases, even though they're risk takers, they become very conservative when they're relying on others and managing money. And they want to protect that capital that they've worked so hard and taken so much risk, risk to earn. And so there is a certain philosophy and a style. It is focused on asset protection, um, cash flow. It's kind of how they'd run their business. And so the philosophy on as you're rounding out resource partners for the majority of those accounting firm clients, you've got to have that in mind. Mm -hmm. um, and then when you tie it back to how the accountants look at it, they want to make sure that it is an asset protection kind of a strategy. Yeah. And so the model that we've built through the integrated advisory piece and through WealthGo really has uh, been tailored and customized to serve those types of clients. And so David, I'll maybe transition back to you. Um, obviously you, you know, us coming together was, uh, as we talked about it, I think in the first episode, um, trying to bring some unique skill sets and specialization together and make that work. And a lot of your background initially was, as you said, sales, but looking at how insurance companies invest differently. So maybe talk a little bit about why people need to be investing differently today sure. and what the smart money well, kind of does in the world. Well, we've talked a little bit about our belief that the financial services industry is broken. And, and I think there's a number of places that, that, I could, I could expand on, but one of the primary ones is how investment advisors encourage their clients to invest. 
So a perfect example of that, a senior executive at a, a very, very large um, insurance company that has billions and billions of dollars that they invest. So to make, and, and the reason the insurance company invests that money is they've got to pay insurance claims. So they're investing for the long term. They know they're going to have uh, capital needs on a regular basis. So that, that capital needs to produce income. And first and foremost, don't lose the principal, right? Because if you lose the principal, you can't meet all your all your obligations. And believe it or not, in Canada, well, believe it or not, um, OSFI regulates a lot of that. So, so you're, you, you, you sort of got your hands tied on, you can't be overly creative. Um, you need to make sure that you can meet your obligations and that is tested on a regular basis. And so I spent a lot of time in that side. So learning about where we invest, how we invest, and then you do a 180 and you talk about, okay, well, we've got salespeople out there and they're selling investment port, uh, funds. And most of those would be segregated funds with insurance company or mutual funds. And guess what? Polar opposite. Like th th there was no similarity whatsoever on what an average client's portfolio looked like and how the insurance company invested their money. So the insurance company was investing in mortgages, real estate, private equity, um, you know, and, and very institutional. It was 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 that mindset. And then you'd deal with individual clients, and you'd go, now just sell them this sixty percent stocks, forty percent bonds, and hey, that's diversification. And I think that um, that always really it was a hard thing for me to get. And it was a real opportunity when we started WealthGo to say my vision of of what I'd love this firm to be able to deliver to people was. Everybody deserves that institutional investment philosophy. Now, I hate to say it, you know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a little, a couple of years over 40. Um, and the older I get, uh, the less risk I want to take. Um, and, and really that was, that, that's predicated that, that sort of risk anxiety um, predicated this investment philosophy to be what was the cornerstone of how we built WealthGo. Um, you know, uh, investing in stocks and bonds, like really? You know, I, we, we've all been through turbulent times, a, a lot of those recently where we've, you know, we've seen significant decreases in a market. And if the vast majority of your capital is invested in one thing, it doesn't really work. And the other thing that, that has become more and more apparent on a global basis, um, the world in the 1970s and 80s, you know, when I started the business in the 1980s, well, wow, seems like a long time ago, and then late 1980s, um, we were focused on diversification globally. So you'd have some money in the US, some money in Canada, some money in Europe, some money in Asia, and you're, you're set because obviously all of those markets are going to work very, very differently. Well, look at the last 20, 30 years. Every major uh, financial event, every single one of those areas has been affected. And so global diversification, thinking you're just investing in stocks is not diversification. So back to how does the insurance company invest? Real estate, mortgages, private equity. I mean, all sorts of ass different asset classes that move in different areas. So more tools in the toolkit, so to speak. For sure. Yeah. And, and, and a goal of flattening the growth curve. So, you know, I, I think of it as I spent the early part of my career riding the investing roller coaster with my clients. And that sucks. So it's all, you're either on your way up, everything's fantastic, I love going out and talking to clients, or holy crap, we just went through this thing, now I gotta go back peaks and, and, valleys and peaks and, and valleys. Yeah. And especially with business owners, the last thing you need is uncertainty. There's already enough uncertainty as a business owner. So this pension style asset management um, of bringing all those different asset classes yeah. together flattens the curve. So and, so, and that so, doesn't mean that you're gonna earn more a higher rate of return. It just means that you're gonna have a lot less right. peaks and valleys. Right. So you're just kind of re reducing that volatility Singles band. And doubles. Yeah. Right. So you talk about insurance companies do that yeah. and you mentioned pension style. Talk a little bit about pension plans and CPP sure. and and you know, but they're exactly the same. I mean, you, you, do, you, yeah. do, you do realize that the vast majority of the high end real estate and all of our downtown cores in this country are, are you know, Ontario Teachers Pension and, and Sun Life, and like, like those are the institutions that own those larger um, assets and, 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 and revenue producing asset classes. Um, you know, for us, and I, and I will say that was the aspirational goal. 
for the first probably 10, 15 years of wealth go, your challenge is until you're managing hundreds of millions of dollars worth of assets, you're actually going and you're buying retail products and services. And the real opportunity and why pension funds do well and endowments and insurance companies, they don't pay retail for anything. I mean, that's probably fundamentally in my life too. I don't, I don't like paying retail for anything. We manage today hundreds of millions of dollars in our proprietary pools. So we only invest alongside CPP, Ontario Teachers Pension and other, other groups, and we don't pay retail. And we pass those savings directly to the investor. And that's a big part too. So most financial advisors make upfront commission. So their businesses are based on, I'm gonna sell you a product and they're gonna pay me this large commission upfront. And by the way, if you take your money out, there's something called deferred sales charges and things of that nature. The insurance company and the investment company is gonna get their money and the investor is gonna go, I guess I paid for that person's commission. 100% of our business at WealthGo is fee-based meaning that we don't make an upfront commission. We're compensated based on the assets that we manage. And the only way that we increase our compensation is to grow those assets. And you, when you talk about alignment, um, what's the worst thing that can happen to us in our investment portfolio is we take losses. Because if we're paid on assets under management, as soon as those assets dip, our revenue dips. So I think the alignment with the client is very, very different because our compensation is based on their success. It's not transactional. And our risk is based on, 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 on not meeting, meeting their goals and objectives. So you, you'd, you'd mentioned pools, and I think, mm -hmm. you know, the, the accounting mindset, um, and I deal with these, I, I even believed it at one point in my career, um, where, you know, you want transparency. As accountants, we spend sure. a lot of time, you know, looking at numbers and making things clear and transparent. We don't like things that feel hidden. Okay. Yeah. And I think as soon as you talk about mutual funds or pools or things like this, you, you feel like there's a veil and you really don't know what's going there on. There might be a reason for that in many cases right. too. And, and so sure. as accountants, we also, the role in accountants in the investment side is to be able to look at taxes as well and go, yeah. okay, I want to be able to mitigate losses or offset income with losses or different things like that. So sure. we tend to have that kind of a, a, a view on investing. But as I've grown and understand my career's evolved, the importance of pools. Um, just speak to that again, because you touched on it, but I, right. why proprietary pools? Why not individual? Individual investing. Yeah. Uh, well, we did that for a long period of time, uh, mostly because if you can take a group and you can collectively bring all of their capital to bear and have hundreds of millions of dollars to allocate, um, you don't have to pay retail. So most institutional investment opportunities uh, at a very bare minimum, you're probably looking at five, ten million dollars um, as a you know um, the the ticket for admission, minimum mm -hmm. ticket for admission. And the challenge with dealing individually is even so, you know we manage some some high net worth clients that have maybe 50, 60, 70 million dollars worth of investable assets. And none of them want to take five, ten million dollars and sort one of thing. throw it on one thing. Yeah, it'd be like taking your equity portfolio and putting it all in Apple stock. Well, exactly. Yeah, and you so, do that. well, hopefully not. Yeah. Uh, some people do. <laughs> um, but bringing people together, pooling that capital. So we talk about pools, but really pooling that capital allows um, everybody to participate at the same level. The other thing that pools do is they eliminate. Um, uh, sp specific sele anti-selection. And what I mean by that is our challenge with individu individual offerings was that when we had a great offering, so I would say a class of A offering, you'd bring that out to your, to your, um, your advisors and who'd get that? Well, yeah. every single one of our ultra high net worth clients, because it's much easier going and saying, well, I'm going to take yeah. a million from there, a million from there, a million from there. And then what about all the people that had a $250,000 yeah. investment account? Well, they do get it, but they sort of get the D and C yeah. offerings, okay, right. or C and D. Um, by pooling that capital, everybody knows it's they're going to be traded equally. the same yeah. and treated equally. And I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. um, so you're not preferencing anybody as you're going through. Well, and I think there you still have the ability within a pooled offering to, you're always looking at how do you mitigate, mitigate taxes and income Absolutely. and offsetting that as you're doing yeah. trading within that pool because you're thinking about all of your clients. And yeah. so... Uh, and, and again, that's a bit of the learning for me as an accountant. Initially, I liked the idea of having everything individual, 
but the more you learn about why it's important to invest differently today, taxes is never the first decision you make. You want to make the right investment decision first, because if you make a poor investment decision, you don't have taxes to worry about. So you know, it's, it's understanding that you need that additional diversification. You need to pool capital to invest like pension funds. Um, and so that is, there is a different way to invest today than there, than there has been in the past. Well, and, and I'd love to say, first of all, we weren't in a position, I mean, uh, up until we, we launched our proprietary pools, I think about six years ago, um, we needed to have hundreds of millions of dollars that we were managing as an organization to make that make sense. The other thing that happened, and you, you, you use the word transparency, which I think is important, is that technology five, six years ago drastically changed um, the barriers to entry for, for a firm like ours to enter right. that model and to provide full transparency. So our clients actually see every single investment holding that we have and their proportionate share. So we talked about online access, things of that nature. Our clients can access 24 seven, our online portal, which is integrated with planning and they can see their investment portfolio and they might go, okay, well I have 15% in real estate they can click on line on this pie that says 15% and it will show every single real estate investment and their proportionate ownership in that. So it, it it's as if they have a segregated account because they see exactly, exactly what their holdings yeah. are. But um, So it's they're never the guessing like with a mutual fund where you might know the top 10 holdings. I might know the top 10 or, holdings yeah. in December 31st. Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and that also brings out much better conversations, much more transparent conversations. Um, and I think it holds us accountable a lot more. Right. You know, at, at the end of the day, when every single investment's transparent, um, our, you know, we have a very large portfolio management team and, and some very highly skilled individuals. That's all they do all day, every day. But they darn well know they're going to be accountable, have to be right. accountable. Right. Yeah. So, so also speak to, you know, the, the thing with pension funds, they, they manage Lots and lots, you know, take CPP, it's, sure. you know, huge numbers, right? And when you look at them, uh, talk a little bit about how they even access, because it's very similar to what we do through our pools. We've got a great team. You mentioned our team, um, but we're also leveraging talent. And no I want to talk, talk a little bit about, because trying to be experts in everything and to be able to actually deliver that, even CPP doesn't do that. So just talk to why it's important to follow talent and what that looks like. Well, it's all about the who, once again. And, and it's, it, I think it's, it's interesting because the term integrated advisory model is just as relevant in how we manage assets as how we're helping accounting firms build that integrated model within their practice. And that is all about the who. Um, in, in many cases, we don't manage directly a lot of stocks and bonds because our belief is if we can access the top institutional talent, let's say in, you know, mid cap U.S. equities and this, and you've got a firm that just knocks it out of the park and, um, we don't pay retail by the way, we go in and, and we're able to engage them on an institutional basis. Why would we want to internalize that or, or, or it, ourselves? Um, if we're trying to access um, uh, specialty mortgage products and services, I want to deal with a multi-billion dollar entity where we can get enormous amounts right. of diversification at a very, very low cost. Well, um, you know, so, and, and, and so you're accessing that talent yeah. externally. And, and we, had, we had some experiences early on in, in our development where, you know, I remember working with a firm that had a very talented individual that um, managed some small cap and, you know, you look at that and if we'd hired that individual in our company and he's the number one small cap manager in Canada, how long are you going to retain him in talent? It's challenging. It and is. so you've got to be able to follow the talent. And um, if you're going to deliver a best in class model, you got to find best in class talent. And you, thinking you can do that all internally is really challenging. I think it is. It also exposes yeah. your business, right? Right. Um, you, you can't have one or two people that could cost you, uh, you know, right. a huge amount of assets. Right. So obviously, um, how we invest in business um, is, you know, how we invest in, in our structure is, is really important. But the alignment of that with the accounting firms is also really, really important. So let's let's finish with that a little yeah. bit and finish with what your experience has been. How, how, do, how do you tie those two pieces together? I think that's, Especially that's, the risk conversation, I is, think. Yeah, that's the most important piece of this. And I think it's, 
you know, Wealthco Asset Management is a resource partner that's uh, part of the integrated advisory piece that firms that we work with have access to okay. and be able to access that type of a philosophy, which has worked quite well. Um, but it is all about that process and that client experience. And so we have, you know, a dedicated portfolio management team that are managing the pools. We've got dedicated investment counselors to the firm. And those investment counselors are only brought into client situations when the firm determines that is in the best interest of the client. And then ultimately our investment counselors take the lead from the accountant and the financial planner within the firm. Um, they are being brought into quarterly review meetings, um, you know, it, it's an integrated story. It's right. not our investment side just does whatever they want to do with the client whenever they want to do it. That's not how it works. That would look more like a referral model. Yep. Um, we are very much working and supporting each other with that client so that the client sees teamwork. And it. And then if they, they also understand that there's lots of times where integration is so important. You know, I, making investment decisions to do a trade without talking to the accounting about year ends of a company or personally, and does it make sense to be doing well, liquidity, this now? right? You know, it, it, right. many investment advisors couldn't care less. They're right. sitting going, how do I, how do I get the, the highest rate of return or whatever for the client? Right. And if you have a business owner client and the accountant has a conversation and they're going to make an acquisition and need to access a million or $2 million dollars. You know, you need to tie that back into your investment strategy because you can't be taking risk with that capital. Right. So well, there's so it, many it, synergies when this yeah, works it, it, together. It, it is. And one of the yeah. most important thing that I've seen in learning over the years is I, I'm always shocked at how many people will take their life savings and they'll work with, with a firm and that says, here, give us your money and we'll make you money. And that's the plan. Okay. So then it's all about rate of return. There's no grounding back to the need for what kind of a rate of return do you actually need? How much risk do you even need to be taking? And should you even be taking risk? Right. And, and the people to be making those decisions are the financial planners and the accounts. It's to be able to understand their overall business needs, their personal needs, what that strategy is. Because until you've laid that out, you really don't know how to invest. I and I think that's the opportunity that we have in bringing those skills together is you get a much better result. And then when there are tough times in the markets, clients are way more grounded and well, way more calm because they feel that they've got a strategy and they've got a team that's got their best interest at heart. I, you know, I, I, I basically say that our, the gift that we need to give and, and the value we need to bring is to help people sleep at night. Exactly. That's it. That, that's what we need to do. Um, we also need to help the accounting firm partners that we have sleep at night. That's sure. that's important too. So anyway, we're gonna the next episode we're gonna talk a little bit about risk. Um, we um, we have uh, a, a very successful insurance business unit, and and uh, you know I don't think you can talk about aspirational goals and where I want to be in the future without making sure that you're mitigating some of the risks that will stop you from getting there. So interesting. Uh, looking forward to sharing that with you in the next episode. I hope that you enjoyed this episode of the Integrated Advisory Podcast. If you'd like to see how much Integrated Advisory can boost the bottom line of your firm, visit integratedadvisory.ca forward slash calculator to download our Integrated Advisory Revenue Calculator. This resource will show you how to grow your firm without having to increase the number of hours you work. Visit integratedadvisory.ca forward slash calculator download the free calculator today.